Well, aren't we just finishing up the site? That's pretty much where I'm at, I think. Uh, sort of. Okay, well, uh, let me let me list what's at least to do. Um, there's basically putting in the final sessions, and I'm still waiting on those. There's uh, push messaging and notifications if I can get to it in time. And I think there might be one other thing that's escaping me at this exact moment. If it's important, I'll remember it. If not, I, I won't. I have a to-do list somewhere. It'll probably be on there. Uh, but since I last recorded a video, um, it's been a few days. And the reason it's been a few days is because I have been working on the service worker part. And I wanted to try and get that just right. And it's, uh, it's working. I mean, I've had a service worker in place from the start, but um, I don't know if you remember, but it basically was like a pass-through service worker. It didn't do anything particular. Uh, all requests just went through it, and it was a fetch uh, to go and get the resources. And uh, the, the next step for me was to actually you know, have it populate a cache of uh, items and, um, you know, actually respond from the cache and, and do a couple of other bits and pieces. So let's actually have a look at the code, because I think that will illuminate things. Firstly, though, we'll go into the Python, because I um, I have got to the point now where we basically hot swap the home page. Um, oh, actually, well, hot swapping the home page is related to this item. I now have a, a JSON file of the the actual sessions, which is currently filled out with nonsense sessions that I have uh, just made up uh, for now. And you can see that it's sort of the date is the first key, and then each the time of each. In, and this is in uh, PST, uh, because that's the time zone of the of Chrome Dev Summit. It's in San Francisco, uh, which will be PST, uh, which means it's, I think, seven hours behind UTC, or GMT is you might call it, depending on um, how you refer to time zones. I mean, who doesn't just sit there referring to time zones? I know I do. So I've got the JSON file. And the JSON file is loaded in by the Python. And that's actually important because I do things like I basically start to kind of set, uh, step through. And I, I basically, this is the, the, the sessions file is now the kind of uh, source of all sorts of uh, bits and pieces in the, in the site. For example, um, I've moved the filters out as well, out to the, their own file. So we've got things like uh, getting the current session. And so we get the, the current UTC time. And we step through all the individual sessions from that JSON file. I have to add seven hours on, which is that there. Um, this is a bit of a funny way to do date parsing. Normally, you'd pass it um, things. But because I need to adjust the time, I, don't know, I might go back to this now that I've actually got it working and just tidy it up. Because I could ask to parse it based on, you know, I could make a string and then ask it to parse it properly rather than doing it this way. It's a bit of a funny way. Uh, to do it. But we have things for getting the current session, getting the next session. And there are some uh, interesting bits and pieces in there. Like you have to make sure that the next session is has a different day to the current day and uh, bits and pieces like that. But it's all dynamic. And also, on the uh, when it comes to the actual home page, which is this, if template's none, as in the home page, we have to make a decision based on uh, the time uh, as the as the server thinks it is, but that's okay because all these things are in UTC anyway, mostly. Basically, if the number of days between the first day of the conference and today is zero, um, adjusting for PST, then it's the live day one. If it's the uh, second day, live day two, uh, because these will I think have different YouTube embeds, so I have to have, you know, different effectively different files for those, uh, different templates. And then um, the final one is we're on neither day of the conference, so show the home page. Uh, this works just fine. Uh, in fact, let me just show you what happens. I will do this without any service worker. So we'll just directly, if you hit Command-Shift-R, if you're working on service worker stuff, Command-Shift-R will actually cause your page to load. You can see it in the network stack. 
cause it to load without any service work. And no, none of those requests are going through the service work. And so that can, can be a really good way to sort of test that, is my server actually responding with the right things uh, before I introduce uh, the service worker? Uh, let me um, also, while we're here, let me just change the date and time. So uh, I've set it to yesterday, if you like. Um, so let's set it to the first day of the conference and then hit Command-Shift-R. And you can see that uh, it's uh, not only is it, let me just move this out of the way. Um, I'll do that. Actually, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, so you can see that I've, I've actually chosen the developer diary day one, so that I know this is actually the day one. It's just like, a, oh, OK, yeah, it's definitely doing the right template. It's day one. And you'll see that up next, and this has been adjusted for local time. Uh, if I disable JavaScript for a moment, la 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 la, down here, up here, disable JavaScript, there you are. Command Shift R, you can see it's 8 a.m. PST. Um, oh, it doesn't have the title in there. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and fix that. And if we uh, re-enable JavaScript, it's the same content once I've got the title back in there. But it's been adjusted for the local time, which is just done in the JavaScript. I have a, I have a bit of JavaScript that constantly, or not constantly, but kind of watches for changes in uh, the schedule, um, which I can I can show you um, if this video doesn't get too long, and um, anyway, the the theory then is this is day one, and you can see that coming up at four o'clock local time for me, which is in about what five hours there are thereabouts five hours it'll be registration and breakfast. Um, you know, obviously as we get into the other sessions, uh, it'll make more sense open date and time. So let's say it is in fact um, six o'clock uh, in the UK. You can see now we've gone. The current session is uh, Alex Russell, and oh, good, we've gone. We've gone from breakfast pretty much straight to lunch. I uh, this time traveling thing is working out just fine. So anyway, there's and you can see here I've got this refreshing listing in oh just less than a minute. We could we could wait see what happens next. Da, 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 da. I might get them to time lapse this. <laughs> Still waiting. There it goes. Ah, it happened. You can see that the the one that was up next becomes live, and and now the next one has appeared in the listing. So that will be you know as the video is playing, will be I'll be basically it'll be swapping the session. So that's kind of what happens with the the live stuff, uh, which is which is all very very cool. And the code for that is kicking around in the components. There's a live session info. Which basically goes through. It's kind of uh, it's sort of in in many ways it's a uh, duplicate of those filters on the server side because it's got to do similar kinds of things. It's got to look through that session JSON. So they share that JSON. The server side and the client side both look at that same JSON and make some decisions on you know what the the next session switch time will be, which is basically look for the next session and find out uh, what the time is and then set a timeout to basically go and do a check for that, which is it works just fine. Um, well, it seems to work just fine anyway. So that is all working. If you you know JavaScript, it swaps sessions, all that. Now, if we reload and look at the network, these all these requests are actually coming boop, from the service worker. Let me show you the service worker. The service worker from the top import scripts, and then I, I, I'm sure you recall the add hash uh, remark filter thing. That basically is going to make sure that if this file changes, that this import scripts line is going to to actually be different. So if we look at the service worker itself, you can see that it's cached up manifest, and then there's a there's the long alphanumeric hash string that goes in there. So if I change the, whatever the contents are of this cache manifest, then this will get updated. The service worker will update. It will run its install and its activation and go through its life cycle. If, by the way, you have not come across the service worker life cycle, uh, there is a brand new document uh, guide article thing on Google Web Fundamentals, which we will link to in uh, the description. And possibly they'll even put one of those fancy annotations on this video as well. Who knows? 
So what goes into the cache manifest? Glad you asked. The cache manifest is here. And you'll see that it's basically a list of all the things that I want caching. And good news, I don't create those myself, or this myself. What I do is I go to, I've made this file called build resource list. And I have a bunch of things that I want it to ignore. And I have a bunch of resources that, like URLs that I know I definitely want, like the various sections of the site. Um, this partial flag means that I actually don't have the server bake in any of the session information. It just means that those the, they come through empty because I know the JavaScript is going to populate them uh, later on. I also get the session information, and I go through each session, and I get its URL because I know I want to cache that offline. And then I walk through the static file. So I go through dot, st uh, dot slash static, so basically the static file here, which has the images, the JSON, the JavaScripts, uh, excluding the service worker itself. Uh, the styles and uh, any third party stuff and manifest and whatever else. That, as I say, results in this big long file here. And in the service worker, once that's, you know, that gets imported and whatever else, the install essentially steps through each of those and it makes a request for each of those. And it will wait until. The caches have been opened, and we've added all those items. And then it does the skip waiting, which basically means go straight to the activated stage. So the life cycle is sort of it's installing, and then it waits until all the clients that are connected to the service worker have disconnected, as in you do like a force refresh or you close the tab. When all the those all the tabs to the Chrome Dev Summit site have closed, it would normally then switch the service worker across to uh, activating. But in this case, I'm telling it to just go straight to the activating stage. Don't worry about uh, anything that's already connected. I'm hoping that will work out fine. I'm hoping there won't be any breaking changes by doing that. The activation itself looks through previous uh, installation caches. So every time we install the service worker, it populates the cache. I'm saying find all those other, other caches that aren't this one, the one that we've just uh, populated through the install, and get rid of them, delete those caches so that we're not building up space and space and space over time. This probably could do with a little bit of in, uh, improvement in that I think it should possibly have a couple of caches. Caches for things that are less likely to change, and caches for things that are more likely to change, like the JavaScript or the CSS. I'm likely to find minor things in there, minor bugs that I just want to tweak or change or whatever. And so rather than invalidating the whole cache and downloading everything every time, a better version of this would be the things that I think are likely to change, those should have their own cache that I can just delete and repopulate. And the things that I think are pretty static and unlikely to change, put them in their own cache as well. Again, this is well, it's a function of, of time to see how um, you know how we get on. And this client's claim, if I understand it correctly, on activation, when this is uh, this service work has been activated, it basically says, OK, I will now respond to all future requests from this point on. So if the page then asks for an, an image or a URL, I will handle it. And it basically pushes the old service worker off to wherever service workers go when they're not needed anymore. Oh, on message, this is an interesting little thing. I mean, I think it's an interesting little thing. I wanted to do this. I was like, how do I, how do I decide whether to notify somebody. Like if the service worker changes, it might be a minor change. And I don't really want to kind of put a little thing that's like, hey, new version. Because it might just be really minor. It just might be like a, a typo or something. And I'm like, yeah, just, it can cope for next time. What I do is the version that's baked in here, which is from the package.json, if it gets a message asking for version, and that message will come from the page, and I'll show you that code in a moment. It basically posts a message back saying, here's my version. In the service worker install, the, where are you? Where are you? Yeah, if we've got an active service worker, we post message going, what's the version? When that comes back, if we've not already kind of had a version, then we store that. And then if there's one that's updating, as in we get, so you've, Imagine the situation you've got one service worker, it's installed, it's running, it's activated, it's doing its thing, and then a new one comes in. And it's like, OK, I'm taking over. 
Well, we've asked the first one, what's your version? And it said 0 0.1.0, because it's Semver. Let me just do that. Let's say 1.0.0. That would have been a better one. And so we've got that version back. And then the new one gets installed, and we ask it, what's your version? And it comes back and says, I'm 2.0.0. I've basically said, I split the current and the new version on dots. And I basically said, if the major version is the same, just log it out to the console going, yeah, I, I updated the service worker. <laughs> if it's a major version change, like 1.0 to 2.0, then we push this toast that's like, really, you know, you should refresh the site. And again, these are things that I might just improve over the coming days. Uh, we'll see how we go. So you can see, actually, if I go to package.json and I change that to 2.0.3, hopefully, when I refresh the page, ta -da, you see site updated, refresh to get the latest. Whereas if I do 2.0.4, but I look in the console, you can see we just get this service worker move from 2.0.3 to 2.0.4. So it's a way for me to kind of decide how much do I want to bother the person at the at the other end. OK, I don't want to wait, uh, take up too much more of your time, but I do think it is worth looking very finally at the fetch itself. This is the uh, function that's going to be called whenever you make a request to the page. Uh, one thing is, if uh, the image ends in at 1x, I always respond with a 1.5x. Uh, this means that I can, I only have to cache the 1.5x, and I will just hot swap it. It doesn't matter. You, you've asked for the 1x, you get the 1.5x. It's in, in my case, it's always background size cover, so I can re respond with a bigger image, and it means I don't have to cache the 1x and the 1.5x offline. It's handy. If the request itself doesn't end with uh, dev submit, then I just say stick to the current request. Um, but if, however, you have asked for the home page, I go through the sessions and I basically look at each day and I adjust for PST. And then I say, if you're inside the first day, respond with live day one from the cache. If you're inside day two, respond with live day two from the cache. And if not, you're going to respond with the dev summit slash home. And then if there are any errors, just respond with dev, sum dev summit slash home. So that means that what we get is we basically call this first. So we, we're saying either we're just going to leave the request as it is, or if it's a request for the home page, we, we might remap it just like the server was doing in the Python. We have to replicate that, that behavior in the service worker. And I guess if you had a JavaScript server, you might actually use the isomorph isom I'm as bad as Jake. He couldn't say isomorphic either. Isomorphic JavaScript. There we go. To do the same logic here of going kind of going, is this on the conference day one, day two? If not, respond with whichever page, whatever. So we're doing the same kind of uh, remapping and rewriting. And if we didn't do that, then on the conference days, you might get the old home page, and you'd have to kind of force refresh to see the live stream, which we don't want. So we potentially remap the request if it's needed. If not, we'll just leave it as is. Check for the cache. Uh, if the cache has got that request, which for all of the files apart from, say, like YouTube thumbnails, uh, uh, anything for analytics, or any, basically any third party stuff, it won't exist in the cache, and we'll just fetch it. Um, and for everything that we, we do have, from the cache, we'll just respond if we've got it. So goodness me, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? Uh, but it has been a few days since I've had a chance to record a video. So there you go. That's what happens if I don't record them often. At this point, I think the site is pretty much shippable. And this will probably, probably be the last dev diary that I'm going to record, and maybe if there's something that comes up in the next little while that's like, oh, I must tell you, then I'll be back. But for now, all I want to say is uh, thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. Thank you for all the comments, all the feedback, uh, all the chatter. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed coming along this journey with me. I've enjoyed having you along. And uh, you know what? Let's do this again sometime. But maybe you can do the coding. Yes! 
What a concept. Toodaloo!